Every story has a beginning, and every person has a home. Somewhere you came from, an origin point. Over 20 years ago, a story began to take shape and spread like wildfire across every corner of the planet. A phenomenon like we've never seen before. This was the advent of Pokemon, starting on the 8-bit original Game Boy and evolving its way onto the latest in portable gaming hardware. Pokemon has entertained hundreds of millions, not just as a video game, but as an anime, an ever-lengthening series of movies, a card game, and even an extensive collection of manga. With every generation came twists and turns, new Pokémon to discover, new places to explore, and new truths revealed through the history of these many lands. But, like I said, every story has a beginning. The timeline of the Pokémon world is a total mess. Mostly because it's not a line. It's more like a chart or a graph, or like someone gave a four-year-old a crayon and let them draw on the wall. Things were, at one time, simple. Red, gold, ruby, diamond, black, black too. It was more or less a continuum. But then Kalos entered the picture and we learned of a war from centuries past in which a weapon was fired. A weapon powerful enough to diverge a universe into two. One in which the weapon was fired and resulted in mysterious gems falling all over the world. This allowed Pokemon to transcend a final evolution into something more. And of course, the other universe in which that never happened. But again, every story has a a beginning, and despite the lore which travels back millions and millions of years to the creation of the entire universe in which Pokémon reside, this is not something we see. This is not where our story begins. No. Our story begins in a place called Kanto. It always has, and I'd like to place a bet that it always will. In late 2018, we are once again going home. So prepare yourself for a stupid baby game made for babies that is actually awesome and deeper than it looks. For a new beginning to later chapters we already know. For another addition to the insane and complex lore of the Pokemon world. This is Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, the story story you never knew. Guess what? Black Friday season is right now, which means shameless materialism is the mantra of the hour. And so it's no coincidence we've got some dope clothes sitting in our merch store just waiting to grace your body with their... Well, just look at them! We here at Treesicle pride ourselves on being a little stranger than other video game lore channels. That's why we're proud to show you our black sheep design, because as the black sheep of gaming channels, it's only natural for us to turn our angst into art. And that's not all. If super intelligent spacefaring races are more your speed, then behold your mom getting sucked up by a tractor beam. Why wouldn't a highly advanced alien race want her? Winky face. Pixelempire.com slash treesicle. Link in the description. And use offer code treesicle to get 10% off the whole site. For years, we've been slapped by the cold, neglectful hand of daddy YouTube for my filthy, dirty mouth. So support the channel with treesicle merch. These designs won't be available forever, so grab your UFO and slash or black sheep shirt and rock it like no one will think you're cool if you don't. That's how advertising works, right? Go to pixelempire.com slash treesicle and check out what we got. And while you're there, go check out some of the other awesome shirts and designs Pixel Empire has to offer. You won't be disappointed. Pixel Empire was kind enough to work with us round the clock to get these things ready for this video's release. Click or tap that link in the description and get your hands on a comfy, high-quality shirt, hoodie, or tank top. I love them, and I know you'll love them too. And remember, code TREESICLE for 10% off everything. Back to it. Hey, so there's gonna be spoilers in this video. If you don't want to be spoiled, um, uh, hit that watch later button and go away. Here we go! If you're like me, Kanto feels like home. It's almost as if I was born there myself. My therapist tells me it's normal! Pokemon was one of the first long games I played and beat, but it also permeated so, so far into pop culture when I was a kid that I doubt I'll ever forget the song of Pallet Town. A blank canvas for which to paint your Pokemon journey. In red and blue, or fire red and leaf green, you played as red as you fought your rival blue for the rights to the Pokemon World Champion seat at the Elite Four, took down Team Rocket on your way, and then captured the mysterious cloned Mewtwo. However, in Pokemon Let's Go, that isn't the case. Or, well, it, it is the case, but you're not red. You're... 
You? Yes, for the first time in a Pokemon game, there's not even so much as a prompt name for the main protag. It simply is you. Different, but okay. And who's this guy then? Some rival, I, I guess? This is Pokemon after all, but who the hell is he? He's supposed to be our rival, but he's helping us? Rivals aren't supposed to help us. He's more like our little bench. And he's got a bit of a hype problem. Got it. You're not gonna believe this. Pokemon. But let's backtrack before you all get upset. Pokemon Let's Go is canon officially, inarguably. So whatever happens within this game has to make sense with the greater lore of the Mega Universe. In the intro, which some chat in the comments is trying to get you to skip with a video starts here timestamp, clearly that guy doesn't understand the nuanced concept of context. I mentioned briefly that the Pokemon world is split into about two universes. There's more, and hypothetically your gender or Pokemon choices splinters those universes down into smaller subsets of universes, but before I send you into an existential panic, let's stick to the point. Pokemon Let's Go is not a remake of Red and Blue, and it's not a remake of Yellow. Just because there's Pikachu doesn't mean it's Yellow 2.0. And speaking of Pikachu, quick shout out to our buddy Loxton over at Noggin. He just released a video on a Pikachu manga you'll definitely like. The Electric Tale of Pikachu. It was made by a hentai artist in the 90s. <laughs> Whoop whoop! Anyway, these games occupy a strange place in the mega timeline. It's a story in Kanto after the story in Kanto. But Grant, I hear you say, why would they have a game in Kanto that's just like red and blue in almost every way, but it's not red and blue? You sound like an idiot. To which I would reply, nay, it is you who is the one that is the idiot. See, at the beginning of this Pokemon journey, red and blue are already done with the events that transpired in, well, red and blue or fire red and leaf green and it, you, you get it. Just assume I mean all of them from now on. However, both sets of those games were in the standard timeline, not the mega timeline. So what happened to the red and blue story in the mega timeline? Well, it happened and you probably saw it. Remember a little anime event that happened a while back, Pokemon Origins? This was a four-part anime mini that detailed some key events in the Pokemon timeline. But specifically for the mega timeline, Origins was red and blue. It served to show how mega evolution played its role in red and blue's story. Red's Charizard mega evolves in the end so he can capture Mewtwo. This short series was believed to be the canon beginning to the mega timeline we know, but at this point, that may not be the case. More on that later. Either way, Let's Go takes place at somewhere around two years after Pokemon Origins. However, these two games are arguably the starting point for this timeline, at least in the game world. And once again, we are in Kanto, where journeys and stories begin. Maybe it's because Kanto is the one place in the Pokemon world that is most like our own world. Maybe it's because the native Pokemon there don't get much crazier than weird birds, bugs, and mammals. Maybe it's because this is the one place in this universe that is so like its IRL counterpart that it's easy to immerse yourself in without having to jump too far out of your imagination comfort zone, but Pokemon always starts here. That cool war stuff, we don't get to play that. The whole Arceus being born from the egg and creating Dialga and Palkia in order to make space and time, nah, that's just stories. Kanto is where it has always begun. Like all of the first four Pokemon regions, Kanto is modeled after an area of Japan, the Kanto Plains, the most industrious, wealthy, and educated area in the island nation. The Kanto Plains houses the entire Tokyo area, which is represented by Celadon and Saffron City, as well as the famous port of Yokohama, which is represented by Vermilion City. The region is mostly, well, plains, which is why we don't get a ton of difference in the overall geography of the Kanto game map. Kanto is also the most advanced of all the regions. It's where the first modern Pokeballs were created. Scientists do research on resurrecting fossils, or creating Pokemon from scratch like Porygon. They even cloned resurrected DNA into a genetically augmented marvel like Mewtwo. 
it's no wonder our journey always starts here. It's the place most like our own world. And at the start of the game, we go in blind, not knowing what to expect while thinking we know what to expect. I suppose that's the issue with multiverses, am I right? Things are so similar, yet so different. But then all of a sudden, Blue shows up and things get turned around. Blue is definitely older than he usually is in R slash B and has already finished his Pokemon journey. He's also a bit of a celeb now. After beating a slightly older Brock, we run into Team Rocket on Mount Moon, and not just any Team Rocket, but a Canon Arse, Jesse James, and Meowth. Yes, they're real now. James fans rejoice. Let's boogie! Later, after meeting Misty and saving Bill from, well, himself, we find ourselves on the SSN once again. We meet an international policeman who is not Looker, so that mystery is solved for you lore fanatics. But what is really interesting is who we meet after we leave the cruise line. A strange painted girl named Mina from the island of Alola. But this Mina is young, about our age, showing how far in the past this story is in comparison to Pokemon Sun and Ultra Moon, where Mina is not only an adult, but also a trial captain. Things get a little stranger from here as we make our way to Lavender Town, which is being haunted by the ghost of Cubone's mother. Something that should have happened in the past that Red would have dealt with. But then again, at this point, maybe you are Red after all? All we've seen is blue, so maybe this whole Origins deal is wrong? Nah, I'm never wrong. Just ask Ralsei's Vachine. Anyway, that's not the only thing which is amiss. The whole Team Rocket scandal is here, trying to take over Silph Co, all under the control of Giovanni himself. But Red should have taken him out of commission years ago. At the same time, Blue meets up with you and leaves on a journey around the region to clean up the rest of Team Rocket while you take on a boss at Silph headquarters. Since when has Blue had a hand in this? It's all very... Curious. But then you defeat him and an event happens which pinpoints perfectly where Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee falls in the mega timeline. Blue takes over the Viridian Gym. It's where we find him in gold and silver during the Kanto part of our journey. So Let's Go takes place right in between red and gold and well before the events of Kalos and Alola. However, it isn't until you defeat the Elite Four that things go a little haywire. Naturally, after your victory against the top four Pokemon trainers in the world, and, you know, that rival kid who's nice to you this time, you go to capture Mewtwo in Cerulean Cave. And you do. But on your way out, your rival tells you that some feisty girl went in looking for the psychoscience experiment, and you should go show her that you got it first. When you meet up with her in the bottom of the cave, she bonks you with a Pokeball and then jumps right into battle. This character's name? It's Green! Green is a character that has never officially been in the Pokemon games, but has existed about as long as the franchise itself in the manga. As a child, she was kidnapped by freaking Ho-Oh and grew up feral. During Red and Blue's introduction to their starter Pokemon, she snuck into Oak's lab and kidnapped his Squirtle. And what Pokemon does she hit you with last? A freaking Blastoise! Like what the heck, Game Freak? She's green! Green! The color of leaf, Pokemon! What makes you think she would steal Squirtle at the beginning? Red, Charmander, Blue, Squirtle, Green, Bulbasaur! But no! You just had to go mess everything up, Miyamoto! This is undoubtedly the green from the manga, and this means a lot. So now, not only are Jesse, James, and Meowth from Team Rocket officially canon, but so is green, meaning this game not only took from the anime, but also the manga. Our character has also usurped Red's role in this timeline as the one who defeated Team Rocket. But instead of doing it single-handedly, he persevered with his friends. But how do we know we're not red? Well, it's simple. Red is actually in the game. After beating a certain amount of master trainers, he appears at Indigo Plateau and challenges you. But this red is a different red. All we know of him at this point is what we learned from our battle with him in the distant future as the Alolan protagonist in Sun or Moon. In that battle, he has Blastoise, Venusaur, and Charizard. But in Let's Go, he has Venusaur, and Blue has Charizard. So in this universe, Red chose Bulbasaur 
Dinosaur, not Charmander. Blue chose his opposite, and Green still stole the Squirtle. Like I said, a divergence from Origins. So you are not Red. This is not a remake of Yellow, and it's not the exact universe as the Pokemon Origin anime, but a tangential one. However, it is the origin story of what we know of the Mega Universe in the Pokemon games. In this universe, Red and Blue set off on their Pokemon journey. It went smoothly. Blue beat Red to the champion seat at the Elite Four, and Red dethroned him due to the power of his bonds with his Pokemon. Afterwards, Red disappeared, and Blue stuck around to travel and hone his skills while also being harassed to run the Viridian Gym. Green lurked in the shadows, learning about Mewtwo and becoming stronger on her own so she could one day catch the thing herself. But then, you showed up, with your Eevee or your Pikachu, which had way too many OP moves and messed it up for her. She then smacks you with some Pokeballs and asks if you want to be one of her Pokemon instead. Here's a last bit of nerd lore for you. In the manga, Green knows Silver, the rival of Gold in the Johto sequels, who is apparently Giovanni's son. If you look into Pokemon Generations, a YouTube event on the Pokemon channel which consisted of multiple anime shorts detailing side events in the Pokemon world. Silver and Green were childhood friends who formed a bond due to their unfortunate circumstances. Because of her simple appearance in Let's Go, it's almost guaranteed we will be getting a Gold and Silver remake in the Mega Universe where she will play a bigger role. The advent of these games can be taken many ways, but if we look at the way Pokemon has gone, it only makes sense. Kalos was the first game in a new universe followed by a remake of Ruby and Sapphire, followed by a new game in Alola, followed by an origin story of the Mega Universe on the new hardware, starting where it all began once again the Kanto region. There are three more stories that have yet to be told in this universe, and who knows how many more to come in the future. But Let's Go ends presumably right as the events of the Mega Universe's Gold and Silver begin. Blue is in his gym. Red has been defeated by us at the doorsteps of the Pokemon League he conquered once before. But what of Green? What role will she play in the future? Will she continue to follow arcs from the manga? Who knows? Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee are the start of something that had already begun a while ago, but on a whole new level. It is a baby game for babies that is addictively fun, mind-numbingly nostalgic, and has more deep cuts than those emo kids in my middle school. It's finally combined the games with not only the anime, but also the manga into a story that has begun to take shape for the new era of the franchise. Its mere existence demands that we once again return to Johto, Sinnoh, and maybe even dumb old Unova. You know, I, I mean, if we have to... It's a game that leaves more questions than answers, but shows the Pokemon Company is merging the multiple worlds of Pokemon for the Mega Timeline, anime, and manga too. It's not only an origin story, but the beginning of something entirely new for the universe within these games. That's the story of Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee! The story you never knew. And that's my take on Pokemon Let's Go. These games are pretty sweet, so claps to you, Nintendo. Can't wait to see where they go from here. Also, don't forget your very own Treesicle shirt, hoodie, or tank top at pixelempire.com slash Treesicle. Link in the description. Also, we're good friends with a dude named Loxton over at Noggin. He goes deep into Pokemon, and he made a video on the electric tail of Pikachu, a manga made by the unwashed hand of a hentai artist in the 90s. I'd highly recommend checking it out. Do it! You'll love it because he's amazing and handsome! Loxton's new video! Treesicle merch! <laughs> I'm Grant. That's all I got for today, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!